Welcome to a second Advent Reflection. I'm Father Dick Mahalik, and the presentation is offered by St. Edmund's Retreat. I'd like to invite you to join me in an opening prayer that I've put together to summarize the seven O antiphons that our reflections are based upon. Almighty God, come to us as wisdom to make us prudent, as Lord to save and redeem us, as root of Jesse to deliver us into love, as key of David to unlock what imprisons us, as dayspring to shed light and life upon us, as king of nations to give us peace, and as Emmanuel to offer us hope and bring us salvation. Amen. In the first reflection, we talked about the wisdom antiphon and how it is draw, uh, intended to make us prudent. This presentation looks at the next three O antiphons and the, a way of pulling them together is the idea of our call to be faithful. And those three antiphons are O Lord, O Root of Jesse, and O King of David. So let me begin with the second antiphon that is O Lord, and it goes this way. O Lord of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush and gave him the law on Sinai. O come and redeem us with an outstretched arm. Fulfill our deepest longings. I found myself um, musing at what it must have been for poor Zipporah who was Moses' wife. Um, it must have been a rather trying marriage. Um, if we just think about what Moses had been through before he married her, uh, he had certainly a violent temper, and I'm con conscious that during the pandemic, so many uh, folks have had domestic violence occur in their lives. Uh, Moses was a vi had a violent temper. We know uh, in the book of Exodus, he murders an Egyptian uh, out of anger. And uh, even after his call that in the burning bush, later he will smash the Ten Commandments in his anger and rage uh, over the people um, in their uh, idolatry. Uh, today, uh, the Antiphon talks about the burning bush and in his encounter with the Lord, he wants to return uh, to Egypt. And of course, we might think, God, he's lost his mind. Um, but he hasn't. He hasn't lost his mind. He's encountered the Lord. And for him and his wife, Sephora, nothing is ever the same after that encounter. Um, for over 35 years, I was involved with Catholic Engaged Encounter and it taught me lo uh, a number of things about marriage and relationships. And sustaining a good and loving relationship is oftentimes very difficult. They thrive and uh, survive uh, when the Lord is made a part of them. I am conscious um, of just how often the word the Lord is used in the Old Testament in describing relationships, uh, people's encounters with the Lord. Uh, over 340 times we find those words, the Lord. And often it will describe how the Lord um, is doing something to uh, stretch out his arms to help people. Uh, it invites us, I think, uh, when we try to think about, well, who is Lord in our life? What is Lord in our life? Uh, what we allow to rule our lives? Is there something um, that really is taking away that uh, attention that we should be giving the Lord. Uh, the antiphon also includes a little verse about um, Moses being the lawgiver. Uh, I don't know about you, but in my life, for the most of it, I've always thought of the commandments in a rather negative, forbidding way. They forbid what we can't do. Um, but as I have aged, I've come to appreciate them as more a protection of our rights and something that gives us great freedom. Um, again, uh, maybe a little ex uh, example from um, my experience with a Catholic engaged encounter. I remember uh, one of the married couples that were presenting 
uh, trying to have some rules they, uh, besides uh, fighting. We, the talk was on how to fight productively. And so they had agreed that uh, in order to make wise and responsible decisions about finances, which were very problematic for them, they wouldn't buy anything that was terribly expensive without first checking with the other. So um, this one night, I guess this was right well before the pandemic, um, the wife comes out, they're about to go out for a, a Christmas party and the wife comes out in this absolutely gorgeous and stunning dress. And the guy knows that she has spent mega bucks on the dress without clearing it with him beforehand. And he says to her, honey, you know how much I love you. Whatever prompted you to buy that dress without asking uh, first? And she said, the devil made me do it. He said, well, you should have said, get behind me, Satan. She said, I did. And he says, it looks very good from back here, too. Now, I don't know whether you laughed, but um, everybody that was on the weekend certainly did. And um, the story kind of concludes with the husband laughing. And um, humor was the way that their marriage was oftentimes saved. And he hugs her in a loving way and stretches out his arms and pulls her in tight. Um, the Antiphon talks about the Lord's outstretched arms, and perhaps that's why I thought of telling that humorous story. Uh, but it often describes uh, how the Lord opens his arms and grasps us by the hand, leads us, and shows us the way when we're so troubled and trying to find our uh, way through life. The uh, Old Testament will many times show us individuals who were helped uh, with God's outstretched hand in rather extraordinary ways. Certainly Moses, um, uh, just thinking about his encounter and experience was certainly extraordinary. Abraham, Noah, others that you can think of certainly were guided and protected and fed. Um, they were released from slavery and bondage and uh, all because God took, took the time to uh, satisfy their deepest needs and greatest longings. Um, I, th I think one of the things that we probably miss is because we're conscious of God coming in extraordinary ways, we miss God's coming when it happens in an ordinary way. Certainly the burning bush that didn't, wasn't consumed, uh, a baby in swaddling clothes and uh, Elijah encountering God in a quiet whisper in the cave uh, are all extraordinary events that make us think God doesn't come in the ordinary. But God oftentimes uses the ordinary to accomplish the extraordinary. He uses the possible to, to achieve the impossible. The next antiphon um, that I'm weaving into this idea of what it takes to be faithful is the antiphon about O Root of Jesse, and it goes like this. O Root of Jesse, standing as a sign among the peoples, before you kings will shut their mouths. To you the nations will make their prayer. Come and deliver us and delay no longer. Um, if you check out where that root of Jesse is found, you'll find it in Isaiah. And it's Isaiah who describes uh, the root of Jesse or David's, King David's family as being not much more than a stump at this point. But out of that, what appeared to be a dead stump came a live branch that turned out to bring us the Messiah. And, um, Isaiah tells us, as he describes that root, that this Messiah is going to have the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Um, I don't watch a lot of television, but lately I've been watching um, PBS's Finding Your Roots that's hosted by Henry Louis Gates Jr. And uh, I'm fascinated with them being able to trace folks' roots, um, and it seems to really intrigue us. Why? 
uh, because we all want to know uh, our background and not only who we are and but whose we are and the the Bible is um, great at doing that so often if we look at Matthew and Luke we find uh, they give genealogy of Jesus and uh, part of the message that the synoptic gospels present to us is the idea that you and I are God's adopted sons and daughters. We're brothers and sisters of Jesus. Uh, Paul will go to some length in, in his letter to the Romans to describe how we're grafted, regardless of whether you were born Jewish, um, he's telling the Romans, you're grafted and you are nurtured and loved with the same roots that fed the Jewish faith. Our Catholic social teaching is um, very much uh, based upon um, the very first pillar, I think, is the idea of the sacredness of life and the dignity of the human person. And it's intended for us to appreciate that we're made in God's image and likeness and that uh, Jesus is like us in all things but sin and that uh, as he grew in wisdom, age, and grace, we could ask ourselves, how are we growing? Are we also growing in wisdom, age, and grace? Are we becoming more and more like him as time goes on? Um, I find again Isaiah helpful because uh, so many of us will get Christmas cards that quote his words, for us a child is born and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We'll use, we'll use that as our Christmas card, so many of us, um, and it prompts me every time I open that card and look at it, how will folks describe you and me when we have left this earth? You know, we refer to Abraham as the father of our faith, and he was the great planter of seeds of faith uh, that ultimately uh, bore fruit in the coming times and places of our world. You know, what are we planting in our lives? Advent's a good time to think about that. You know, uh, I am often encouraged by that root of Jesse, Antiphon, why? because it promises the possibility of new life from what would seem to be dead and gone forever. The fourth antiphon is um, O Key of David, and it goes like this. O Key of David, O royal power of Israel, controlling at your will the gate of heaven, come, break down the prison walls of death for those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and lead your captive people into freedom. Now that um, messianic title is both in Isaiah the prophet and also it's echoed in the book of Revelation. And the idea that's captured in both places is the key unlocks and opens doors that can never be shut. And it also locks and seals doors that can never be reopened. And if you look at um, St. Uh, Edmund's Retreats Chapel, you'll find over the confession door um, uh, what appears to be the keys of uh, given to Peter and the idea that uh, was given to Peter, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Uh, confession is a great opportunity. Many avail themselves during Advent of that sacrament because it uh, is a way of lo locking the past, closing the door, so to speak, and opening new possibilities. The other thing, um, the last time I preached on the keys of the kingdom and that forgiveness um, part of the gospel was uh, one of the commentators talked about, you know, we say, whose sins you forgive, they're forgiven. Whose, whose sins those you hold bound are held bound. And one of the commentators points out that uh, we add the word those sins you hold bound are held bound when the actual uh, words of the original language don't include the word sin. And the commentator is pointing out the idea that those held bound are held together and supported, encouraged, that we don't let go of folks after we've restored them and brought them back into the love of God in the church. 
Um, that perhaps is something uh, rather striking to think about, especially as you receive the sacrament this Advent. The book uh, tells us that the key of David is given to you and to me. Why? Because we have limited strength and we need God's help. It's that simple. Um, if we're to forgive others, we have to learn to let go. And oftentimes it requires a great deal of grace from God to do that. And in the book of Revelation, that uh, promise from God is given because we have made efforts to keep God's word and we haven't denied God. And so we've been in the book of Revelation, what it describes as faithful during life's trials and uh, God intends to keep us safe as a result. Um, we're reassured that because God has grasped us by the hand, we can let go and let God because God's outstretched hand isn't going to let us go. Matthew, um, in a marvelous way, again, one of the passages that's used during Advent and Christmas is the idea that the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. And those who dwell in the shadow of death, light has arisen. The Lord has formed you and me to be light in our world. Jesus tells us in the gospel that we're salt and light for the world. You know, there are those that are in darkness around us this Advent. And a good way for us to celebrate Advent is to ask ourselves, how might we be a source of life and light for them? Please join me in our concluding prayer. Almighty God, come to us as Lord to save and redeem us, as Root of Jesse to deliver us into love, and as Key of David to unlock what imprisons us. Amen.